So friends, some news just broke about some new insurrectionist behavior by Donald Trump. And this evidence comes from one of Donald Trump's closest advisors. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, in case we needed any more evidence that Donald Trump is a stone cold insurrectionist, spoiler alert, we didn't need any more evidence, but we got some anyway. And it came from Donald Trump's longest serving aide, his close associate and confidant, this guy. Dan Scavino. Dan Scavino started out at age 13 as a Trump caddy. He then went on to be a Coca-Cola sales guy, a pharmaceutical rep. He then landed a sweet job as assistant manager of one of Donald Trump's golf courses. And ultimately, when Donald Trump was elected president, Dan Scavino became Donald Trump's social media director. Dan Scavino is a long time, hard core, Trump aide, associate, confidant, and loyalist. And now it turns out, Dan Scavino will be a devastating witness against Donald Trump in his criminal trial in D.C. for trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election. We're going to go through some of the new reporting, and it really is blockbuster reporting from ABC News. We're going to take some time to read through a good bit of the article, not all of it, but I will post a link to the ABC News article in the description for this video. Here's the headline. Special counsel probe uncovers new details about Trump's inaction on January 6th. And that article begins, Special counsel Jack Smith's team has uncovered previously undisclosed details about former President Donald Trump's refusal to help stop the violent attack on the U.S. Capitol three years ago as he, Trump, sat watching TV inside the White House according to sources familiar with what Smith's team has learned during its January 6 probe. Many of the exclusive details come from the questioning of Trump's former Deputy Chief of Staff, Dan Scavino, who first started working for Trump as a teenager three decades ago and is now a paid senior advisor to Trump's reelection campaign. Scavino wouldn't speak with the House Select Committee that conducted its own probe related to January 6th, but after a judge overruled claims of executive privilege last year, he, Scavino, did speak with Smith's team and key portions of what he said were described to ABC News. New details also come from the Smith team's interviews with other White House advisors and top lawyers who, despite being deposed in the congressional probe, previously declined to answer questions about Trump's own statements and demeanor on January 6, 2021, according to publicly released transcripts of their interviews in that probe. Sources said Scavino told Smith's investigators that as the violence began to escalate that day, January 6, Trump was just not interested in doing more to stop it, to stop the violence. Sources also said former aide Nick Luna told federal investigators that when Trump was informed that then Vice President Mike Pence had to be rushed to a secure location, Trump responded, so what? Which sources said Luna saw as an unexpected willingness by Trump to let potential harm come to a longtime loyalist. House Democrats and other critics have openly accused Trump 
of failing to do enough that day, with the Democrat-led House Select Committee accusing Trump of committing an utter moral failure and a clear dereliction of duty. But what sources now describe to the ABC News are the assessments and firsthand accounts of several of Trump's own advisors who stood by him for years and were among the few to directly engage with him, Trump, throughout that day. Along with Scavino and Luna, that small group included then Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, then White House Counsel Pat Cipollone, and Cipollone's former deputy, Pat Philbin. When Scavino and other White House officials learned that rioters had violently stormed the Capitol, they rushed into the dining room to urge Trump to help calm the situation. Still, Trump didn't do anything. According to what sources said Scavino told Smith's team, Trump was very angry that day, not angry at what his supporters were doing to a pillar of American democracy, but steaming that the election was allegedly stolen from him and his supporters who were angry on his behalf. Scavino described it all as very unsettling. At times, Trump just sat silently at the head of the table with his arms folded and his eyes locked on the TV, Scavino recounted. After unsuccessfully trying for up to 20 minutes to persuade Trump to release some sort of calming statement, Scavino and others walked out of the dining room, leaving Trump alone, sources said. That's when, according to sources, Trump posted a message on his Twitter account saying that Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done. Trump's aides told investigators they were shocked by the post. Aside from Trump, Scavino was the only other person with access to Trump's Twitter account, and he was often the one actually posting messages to it. So when the message about Pence popped up, Cipollone and another White House attorney raced to find Scavino, demanding to know why he, Scavino, would post that in the midst of such a precarious situation. Scavino said he was as blindsided by the post as they were, insisting to them, I didn't do it. Some of Trump's aides then returned to the dining room to explain to Trump that a public attack on Pence was not what we need, as Scavino put it to Smith's team. But it's true, Trump responded. At about the same time Trump's aides were again pushing him to do more, a White House security official heard reports over police radio that indicated Pence's security detail believed this was about to get very ugly. As Trump aide Luna recalled, Trump didn't seem to care that Pence had to be moved to a secure location. Trump showed he was capable of allowing harm to come to one of his closest allies at the time, Luna told investigators. You know, friends, I'm tempted to say unbelievable, but it's entirely believable, isn't it? Donald Trump really is a stone cold insurrectionist and a man so callous that he didn't care if his own vice president lived or died that day. Well, I, for one, am extremely appreciative of Special Counsel Jack Smith and his team of federal prosecutors because, remember, Dan Scavino refused to testify to the January 6th committee. He wanted to hide that deeply damaging, sharply incriminating evidence from the J6 committee and, by extension, from We the People, and he refused to testify. Indeed, he was held in contempt and referred for criminal prosecution, but for whatever reason, the Department of Justice opted not to prosecute him. Well, Dan Scavino, the former Trump caddy, you know, Jack Smith, figuratively speaking, forced Dan Scavino to stop carrying Donald Trump's bags for him. And he extracted that deeply damaging evidence from Dan Scavino and undoubtedly presented it to the grand jury. 
He litigated the issue of Dan Scavino's BS executive privilege claim. He defeated it and he forced Dan Scavino into the grand jury to testify about and in a very real sense against Donald Trump. Well, now Dan Scavino and one of Donald Trump's so-called body men, Nick Luna, we also heard him discussed in that ABC News reporting. Well, their voices will now be added to the chorus of Republican voices, dozens and dozens of Republican voices, Republican witnesses who will stream through that courtroom in Washington, D.C. and testify about and against Donald Trump. And Donald Trump will be convicted. Donald Trump will be held accountable for his democracy busting crimes on and around January 6th. Bet on it, friends. Bet on it. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.